Who's been your favourite character that you've ever played? Hmm. That's a very difficult. Hi, Rowan. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Simon. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um, I've right. actually got I've got COVID, but apart from that, I'm okay. Oh no, everyone's got COVID. Okay, good. Okay, this is <laughs> very bad news. I mean, not for us. You know, we're fine. We're in a different place. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, congratulations on the show. Um, thank you. I can't wait to talk to you about it. Before we do, though, I want to just put something out there to you. Rowan Atkinson, national treasure. What do you think of that? Uh, that fills me with fear. Uh, more than anything else. There's something about being a national treasure that I've never really wanted to be. I mean, I, I'm going to take it as a flattering description, whomsoever might make it. Uh, but I think what comes with national treasuredom, I think, is kind of responsibility. You know, you're supposed to behave and you're supposed to do what everyone loves. And, you know, you're, you know, you're supposed to fit in rather than stick out. Uh, and I wouldn't like that responsibility of being a sort of um, role model or something. I've never wanted to be a role model. Um, I, I hope I, I'm not a misbehaving man particularly, but the idea of being, you know, a sort of someone that people look up to, that fills me with more fear than, than anything else. So I'm going to, I'm going, if you're offering me national treasuredom, I'm going to decline it. <laughs> I feel like I've just offended a comedy great. I'm so sorry. No, um, no, you haven't offended me <laughs> at all. No, no, because it's 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 not much to do with, uh, yeah, whether you're good at comedy or not. I I I would completely distinguish from whether you're a national treasure. That becomes more about you and about your personality. And I, I I've never really wanted to be known as me, or my personality. I'm very happy to be known for the characters that I play. Perfect. Well, great answer. Um, so, uh, Man vs. B, um, it was co-created and written by yourself. What can you tell us about how it came about? Because in my head, you actually were house-sitting for someone and you actually were traumatised by a bee, but I guess it didn't happen like that. Uh, no. <laughs> no, no. I, well, it was just something that myself and our, my co-creator, Will Davis, thought of. Will was the instigator, really, when he came up with, with his idea, you know, you know, what do house-sitters do? And would it be funny if someone was house sitting who manifestly was underqualified for the job uh, so what would that be that would probably be a very wealthy couple with a fabulous house full of very very valuable artworks and objects um, and how someone incompetent uh, might behave in that situation and then we moved on to the, you know what's the catalyst and we came up with this idea of the catalyst being a bee that the bee is the thing that he becomes obsessed with and leads him down a very dark path um he becomes obsessed with it and that is the you know is the is is the making of his uh destruction and potentially that of the house and the objects around him um so it was just that idea of you know, house sitting is such an odd thing because it's a sort of non-job, isn't it? And yet it brings with it huge responsibility. I mean, you know, particularly at the at the, at the upper end of the market. Uh, if you're in, the, you know, and very often these very, 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 very wealthy people go on holiday for a week and hand the keys to their house to someone they have never met in their lives before. Uh, and that, and what an odd thing that is. Uh, so that is the is the core sort of premise, I suppose, of our story. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously Trevor finds himself in a lot of trouble whilst house sitting. So I'm curious to know, which one of your most iconic characters would you absolutely not trust with looking after your house? Uh, well, on the basis of my experience with Trevor Bingley, uh, he's definitely one of them. Uh, well, in fact, I wouldn't trust anyone I've played. Maybe the French Detective uh, Maygray that I played, he he was a pretty responsible individual, <laughs> but that was a very serious part. Um, but the very nature of comedy is um, you create ca characters who are full of flaws, uh, and that's what we like. You know, we like to watch the the smugness and the self deceit of someone like Johnny English, or the just the sort of plain, sort of self centered anarchy of Mr. Bean. Um, I certainly wouldn't trust Mr. Bean in House of Mine. I wouldn't trust Johnny English either because he would, you know, somehow find a way to get it wrong. Um, the Blackadder? Mm. Yeah, he'd probably leave, leave after a day and not tell you. 
Yeah, um, and I feel like he'd be really nosy as well. He'd be like looking through. Yes, yeah. In the end, I wouldn't trust any of them. <laughs> I, can't, I can't, you know. But then that's why we, that's why we find them, you know, funny because they're they're inherently untrustworthy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so, Trevor, your character, I think he's a very likable character, yeah. and I think that you root for most of your characters in the situations they find themselves in. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I have to ask you, who's been your favourite character that you've ever played? Hmm. That's a very difficult. You see, the problem, I, I mean, I would say Mr. Bean because I find him in many ways the more interesting because he's such a weirdo, you know, he's such a sort of a, an unpleasant, strange, quite nasty, self centered child, you know, trapped in a man's body. Um, but, uh, but at the same time, playing him, there's a tremendous amount of responsibility because it's basically down to me to make things, you know, work. Uh, and that's not a responsibility which I particularly enjoy. It's one that I've, you know, suffered in order to get the art onto the screen. But yeah, I wouldn't say it's pleasurable. It's sort of stressful. I mean, the one that I've probably enjoyed playing the most is probably the Blackadder. It's probably Edmund Blackadder because, well, simply because when we were making those shows, and that was a long time ago, but when we were making them, uh, the, there was a wonderful sense of shared responsibility with everyone who was involved with the shows because there were so many brilliant performers around, you know, me and I was around them that there was this, you know, wonderful sense that when Stephen Fry came on or Hugh Laurie came on, you, I could just relax and let them be funny for two or three minutes or, you know, Tony Robinson as Baldrick would come on and be just brilliant. And I could, and I could just, you know, sit there and watch him. And that was a, there was a wonderful, it was like a, a repertory company of actors. And it was a very far more relaxing thing. I mean, the Blackadder was slightly unrelaxing. Uh, the rehearsals were strangely stressful uh, when it came to script and things like that but but we the cast you know got on extremely well and it was it was a very relaxing experience so, so that's the character of which i probably have the fondest memories that's amazing yeah it's like comedy alchemy watching those characters mm -hmm. come together. yeah um, yeah 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 it was a happy it was, it was a happy accident <laughs> oh good um and obviously you mentioned him there uh one of your most famous characters, character we all love, Mr. Bean. Um, he's shown all over the world. So where has been the craziest place in the world that you've been recognised as Mr. Bean that's made you think, wow, someone recognised me here? Uh, I I haven't had the experience because I, I travel, you, you may find this surprising, very, very little. I'm not, I'm not a great lover of travel. I tend to travel in order to promote uh, movies actually or you know I've been to all sorts of places you know Japan and Sweden and the US and most of the countries in Europe Australia etc that you go to all sorts of places but um, I have heard of, of people when they're making films for comic relief in in Africa and 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 they go to some some very far out very sort of simple dwellings in the middle of nowhere in Africa uh, and she said she walked into this kind of thatched hut and there were four people in there and there was a there was a tiny black and white television about that big this was only sort of 10 or 15 years ago and there was a an old-fashioned VHS cassette tape player and it was playing yeah uh, the Mr. Bean live action series and they were all gathered around in the village uh, to watch it so you know that does surprise me i mean I, I always had a feeling and it was part of the inspiration for the creation of mr bean that we we had the potential to entertain internationally but when you hear of the you know the you know you know of the um, of how far the roots have spread it it, it continues to surprise me mm. That's amazing. It must be incredibly touching as well. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. No, it was very sweet, actually. And, and you think, oh, well, there you go. You know, you imagine being on a, you know, French TV, maybe, but the idea of being uh, absolutely in, in the middle of nowhere where there is no TV and and, and, and all they've got is some, some old <laughs> bits of plastic VHS cassettes to play. Hey, what's going on? I'm Kevin Hart. Hi, my name's Eric Stone Street. Hi, I'm Margo. I'm Journey. I'm James McAvoy. I'm Daniel Radcliffe. I'm Rebel Wilson. I'm Jeremy Clarkson. I'm going to be translating some Scottish tweets 
for It's Gone Viral. On It's Gone Viral. Ooh. On It's Gone Viral. 